Here's where I'll go to the real heart of neuromodulation. We talked about the Egyptians in the beginning, and we talked about the fact that they understood what the brain was and had uh, hieroglyphics for the brain. Uh, we talked about the Edwin Smith papyrus, which was an Egyptian document. Um, uh, the Egyptians understood a lot. And the Egyptians were among the first to understand that you could use electricity for medical purposes. And I'm sure this was an accident. Somebody was uh, grabbing this Nile catfish and its stingers caused a discharge and it created a painful sensation. But it must have been something where uh, somebody who was arthritic was catching catfish and after they got stung, their pain was relieved. And so they even used this as therapy for somebody with uh, painful arthritis. We don't use catfish in the OR, at least nobody that I know does. But what we do is use what I think is some of the most incredible technology. Now this is from Neuropace. And this is a, um, what we call a responsive neural stimulator or RNS system. In this patient right here, if you're uh, understanding left and right, this is the left side of their head. And this is, just take my word for it, or on this uh, uh, image here, this overlies, we were able to figure out through, uh, I think it was strips and grids in this situation, we were able to figure out that this patient's epilepsy was centered on their motor cortex. It's the left side of the brain. So all of you know that that means the right side will be affected. So even if we could tell them that, oh my gosh, we'll just resect the area of your right motor cortex or your left motor cortex and your seizures will go away. I don't think anyone would uh, volunteer to exchange epilepsy for plegia, uh, even if it's in one limb, but be it the dominant limb. So what do you do here? Do you just put people on medication? Absolutely not. This is a remarkable device that can not only sense electrical activity and learn seizure activity, and then it can actually discharge to stop the seizures before they occur. Some people call it a brain pacemaker. I think that's um, sort of uh, belittling what it does. It's an highly sophisticated device that lives implanted in the skull. It's got a microprocessor here. It's got a battery here and it senses and delivers therapy, which is really incredible. Here's a situation where we were again using bone fiducials, which we always do. And we were putting electrodes in and over here, it's probably a little bit hard for you to tell, but these electrodes, Two electrodes are going down the long axis from the occiput towards the, uh, um, towards the front of the head, uh, in through the hippocampus and into the amygdala. And these other two electrodes, much higher up situated, are going down the long axis into the temporal lobes. And uh, what we're trying to do is figure out which temporal lobe had a problem and which amygdala hippocampus had a problem. Well, it turns out that the problems were coming in this patient from his left hippocampus and his left temporal neocortex, not his left insula, which some of our epilepsy colleagues thought it was coming from. And it was compelling because there were some imaging findings that would have led us to believe that. So what's to do here? Is that like, oh, wow, awesome. Let's take this out. No, the problem was we were getting seizures from these uh, temporal lobe structures, but we were also getting seizures from these neocortical structures. And the neocortical structures were more posterior, and many of you will know, that put his language at risk. So not being able to resect over here, what we did was we placed a, again, a neuropace. This time these aren't strip electrodes, these are depth electrodes, and we put one. We replaced this uh, recording electrode for a neuropace depth electrode in the hippocampus and another one in that uh, lateral neocortex. And uh, we've been very fortunate to uh, create a seizure-free um, 
outpatient, which is really, really incredible and really, really rewarding. And if you think about it, you know, in many of our brain tumor patients, unfortunately, they will recur. In many of our spine patients, their back aches and their ailments will recur. Here's a way of providing unbelievable remedy to somebody and giving them back their lives. Here's a little bit of what the neuropace looks like. You are literally harboring this walking, talking EEG device that learns your epileptiform behavior and then will deliver a therapy when it senses that. And for me, I think that this is really incredible. This is what was being alluded to before about closed loop technology. We're not just stimulating all the time, we're recording and listening all the time or much of the time, but stimulating when we need it. So this is really, I think, again, the future of neurosurgery. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.